Classification of Communication Models Communication requires uh, being familiar and aware about the different factors that intervene in the process of communication. So these factors can help people to better communicate, hence be good communicators. So in the process of communication, um, there are elements and directions that we have to understand. So it has been actually theorized by means of diagrams of diverse forms. It may vary from the simplest one to the most complex mathematical one. So in this lesson, we will understand the significance of the direction, the focus uh, on the different elements involved in the process of communication. But before we start delving in into the different um, communication model, let's try first to understand the definition of a model. So a model basically is a conceptual representation of some phenomena. So here, we'll look into the, the field of communication. The significance of the different elements in the process of communication. Furthermore, a model represents the major features and eliminates the unnecessary details of communication for us to better understand or have a clear picture of how communication works. And then lastly, a communication model describes what is necessary for an act of communication to take place. So for us to have a better understanding, let's talk about the different functions of communication model. So the first one is that it clarifies the scope of human interaction. It shows if it is circular, complex, continuous, dynamic, or the decoding process of how we understand a specific message or information. The next one is that it points out where we should look into and uh, to under what condition we should analyze the different responses so that for us to be able to give um, sound judgment in a specific information presented or given to us. Furthermore, it shows the variables in the human communication, variable pertaining to the different elements involved in the process of communication. And uh, definitely, finally, since uh, we are talking about a representation or a concept of specific process, then models of communication can also be used as a framework in different forms of research work. Now let's start talking about the different classification of communication models. So we have three, three classifications. So the first one we have the LCM or the linear communication model. And then the second one is the TCM or the transactional communication model. And the last one is the ICM, which refers to the interactive communication model or also known as the convergence model of communication. Now, let's look into the different um, aspects of each um, models of communication. So, for the components, we will still see some of the significant elements such as the message, the channel, the receiver, and the, the, the presence of the noise in each model of communication. So, um, linear communication is a one-way process. It is used... Um, commonly used in mass communication in setting up propaganda and then persuading people so it can be used in mass communication or in interpersonal uh, or group communication the next one is the key features um, when we when, when we talk about uh, linear communication um, there's no feedback okay there's no feedback in in the process the concept of noise definitely is there because you know um, the receiver doesn't have the opportunity to clarify things out they would they, they basically just get information 
and absorb all the information being presented to them. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of an, a linear communication model. So, um, it is good at audience persuasion, as I mentioned a while ago, in propaganda setting. So, it's commonly used specifically in, in during election time, in ad- advertising, advertisements. And then, it is it has an intentional result. Communication is not continuous. There's no, as I mentioned, concept of feedback. And it's there's no way of you knowing the receiver of, of your um, message. Now, let's try to look into the next model, which is the transactional communication model. So, um, this model reminds us that, okay, you as the sender changes and then the other person as the receiver, the other end changes. So, uh, this uh, specific model of communication um, reminds us of the, the concept of interdependence when it comes to sending and receiving messages. So your background and your um, your attitude, beliefs, and self-esteem play a significant role in the entire process. Now let's look into the pros and cons of the transactional model. So it is simultaneous and uh, it has instant feedback in the process. No discrimination between the sender and the receiver since they have the opportunity to clarify things out. And then it encourages nonverbal communication and more noise is present due to the communicators talking uh, all at the same time. Now, let's talk about the interactive communication model or also known as the convergence model. So, this type of model of communication um, exchange ideas and messages simultaneously. Um, They take place both ways and then the sender receive and uh, receive and uh, send message vice versa however in this type of uh, model of communication there will you know the use of new channel can emerge and actually it is used in the entire process of communication so um, it is highlighted in in this particular uh, model of communication so um, new technologies are actually acknowledged in the process, and uh, as we talk about the pros and cons of this uh, mod of this model, rather, um, the feedback is present even if you are using mass communication through probably use of um, other sources, and then new communication channel again, as I mentioned, is present. Um, Connectivity or signal can be an issue and then the sender and the receiver might not know each other because of the concept of the the model itself. Now let's try to look into the different different examples of the models. All right. So for the linear communication, as I've mentioned a while ago, it is a, the concept is more of the unidirectional model. It is it presents simple communication act and involves persuasion. Then the second one is the transactional model model, which is a more detailed um, type of model. It involves more elements of communication. Um, it considers the situation of the communication where. There is simultaneous exchange between the sender and the receiver and uh, participation is continuous and simultaneous as I mentioned and all uh, it has the, the concept of past, present and future in the process. Now for the interactive model of communication um, as an improved process, it still begins with the sender, the common element, sender in which a speaker decodes the message and using different channels. And the receiver listens and decodes the message. 
and provide sika. Remember that. In this three classification of models, linear, transactional, and interactional, uh, interactional model, right? It basically gives us the idea that communication is there to stay. It, it will em emphasize in the elements in the process that is involved in the communication process.